Museum of Islamic Art, a treasure trove of Qatar's finest Islamic works. The Museum of Islamic Art, MIA, is a museum on one end of the 7 km long, 4.3 miles, Cornish in Doha, Qatar. As per the architect I.M. Pace specifications, the museum is built on an island off an artificial projecting peninsula near the traditional Dao Harbour. Hello everyone, my name is Amit and you are in my vlog show. A purpose-built park surrounds the edifice on the eastern and southern facades while two bridges connect the southern front facade of the property with the main peninsula that holds the park. The western and northern facades are marked by the harbor showcasing the Qatari seafaring past. The museum is influenced by ancient Islamic architecture yet has a uniquely modern design involving geometric patterns. It is the first of its kind to feature over 14 centuries of Islamic art in the Arab states of the Persian Gulf. Occupying an area of 45,000 square meters, 480,000 square feet, the museum is on an artificial peninsula overlooking the south end of Doha Bay. Construction of the building was done by a Turkish company, Bator Construction, in 2006. The museum was opened on November 22, 2008, by the then Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Hamid. It opened to the general public on December 8, 2008. 2017 When I came to Qatar for the first time, I came to this museum on a city tour. If you have a residence permit in Qatar, you can enter for free. Fees, adults who are non-residents entry, 50 Qatari Rial. Students who are non-residents entry, 25 Qatari Rial. The main building consists of the five floors, the main dome, and the central tower. The interior gallery spaces were designed by a team of Wilmot Associates. As informed by information team, I start visit from second floor, Gallery 1. The Museum of Islamic Art represents Islamic art from three continents over 1,400 years. Its collection includes metalwork, ceramics, jewelry, woodwork, textiles, and glass obtained from three continents and dating from the 7th to the 20th century. Seen some collection like, necklace with three pendants and earrings from Morocco, from the Alawite period, 12th-13th centuries, gem set sapphires, emeralds and rubies with pearls on gold. Plate with spiral motifs, Turkey, Iznik, Ottoman period, mid-10th century. Kavor vase, Syria, Damascus, Mamluk period, mid-8th century, gilded and enameled glass. Folio from the Blue Quran, Surah al-Baqarah, Umayyad of al-Andalus period, 3rd century. Ink, gold on indigo colored parchment. Necklace, India, Varanasi, Mughal period, 12th century, gem set diamond, emeralds, pearls, gold and enamel. Manuscript of the Ramayana, Pakistan, Lahore, Mughal period, used ink, opaque watercolor and gold on paper. Ear, Dagger, Spain, Granada, Nazra period, 9th early 10th century. Steel blade with gold inlay, wood and horn hilt. Necklace fittings and two pairs of bracelets, Iran, Seljuk period, 6th century. On the screen, one can see the old age video of Iran, Baghdad. The museum houses a collection of work gathered since the late 1980s including manuscripts, textiles and ceramics. It is one of the world's most complete collections of Islamic artifacts. With items originating in Spain, Egypt, Iran, Iraq, Turkey, India and Central Asia. The rich collection of the Museum of Islamic Art 
Qatar draws influence from Islam and is a mix of both religious and non-religious. You will find here everything from 6th century Jar with stand from Egypt of Fatimid and Ayyubid period to brightly colored lamps, intricate vases and goblets. Like this Jar's Umayyad or early Abbasid period, 2nd or 3rd century. See this oil lamps from 2nd 3rd century. Oil lamps were widely used in the Islamic world. This chess pieces, Fatimid period, from around 5th to 6th century, carved ivory. Around 5th to 6th century, Fatimid period, found from Egypt, Syria some armlet, bracelets, rings, earrings, worn by both man and woman. Tree-shaped ornament, big one 1st millennium BC and small 4th to 6th century. These ornaments probably represents Tree of Life, an ancient symbol of rebirth popular among the nomads of Central Asia. The function of this object is not clear, but the small tree ornament was most likely used to decorate a headdress. Although they were made of years apart, the similarities between the two are striking and show how traditional motifs survive and continue to be used throughout millennia. Monumental stucco panel of 12th century from Iran. This large stucco panel shows lively scenes of royal gathering, drinking and fasting. These customs were typical of the Iranian tradition and were readily adopted by the Turco-Mongolian nomads who rules over Iran for about three centuries. Although its panel might have decorated the walls of a reception hall in a royal palace, 9th century's backgammon and chess game board from Spain, Granada. Necklace elements, belt bucky, earrings element. These polychrome tiles shows the continued use of Islamic motifs following the end of Muslim rule. Produces in Toledo and Seville. The Cuenca y Arista technique, meaning rope and edge, consisted of outlining areas of glaze you saying thin strips of clay. Tiles like these, with repeated polygons, stars or floral patterns, would have decorated the buildings of Christian rulers or been used for renovations in the Alhambra place. I just saw half of the second floor. It was really nice to see so much and so much information. I entered through that gate, this time I will go to that side. Let's see what else there is. Calligraphic horse from India, Deccan Sultanate, Golconda or Bijapur, Mughal period, end of the 10th early to 11th century. Quran manuscript in gold script, from Syria or northern Iraq, late Abbasid or Zangid period. Ink, opaque watercolor, silver and gold on paper. Mosque Lamp, Egypt, Cairo. This blue inscription on the neck of the Mosque Lamp is a famous verse from the Surah Al-Nur, which compress God to light shining in a glass lamp within a niche. Once the lamp is lit, the decoration beautifully transiates the luminous aspect of the Quranic text. Qibla Indicator, Iran, Isfahan. When praying, sacrificing animals or burying someone, Muslim face a sacred direction called Qibla. Jerusalem was the first Qibla until 642 AD, when a Quranic revelation changed the direction of prayer towards the Kaaba in Mecca, Surah al-Baqarah, the Kaw, verse 144. Qibla indicators provide the Qibla direction from major cities around the Islamic world, using a magnetic compass with a 360-degree division scale. Mirab panel, Afghanistan, Ghaznavid period, the Mirab, prayer niche, is used in mosques to visually identify the Qibla. The niche helps to amplify the lead voice of the Imam during prayer inside the mosque. It also symbolizes the Prophet's role as first Iman. Satara, door textile, of the Kaaba. Made for Sultan Abdulmesid, Egypt, Cairo, Ottoman period.
I will present much more informative information in the next episode, after a little coffee break. In the meantime subscribe the channel and click the bell icon, so you can get notification, on dot ones I upload, and do not forget to give your opinion. Hello everyone, my name is Amit and you are in my vlog show.